Copyright applies to the following verbal and written content. With the exception of the content owner, complete content excerpts and links may be used for nonprofit purposes only, provided that full and clear credit is given to the following names wherein Diary Single Woman, Diary of a Single Woman, and Miss Anonymous. Appropriate and specific direction to the original content must be used. All rights are reserved. Hi, I'm Miss Anonymous with Diary of a Single Woman. I hope that you have been enjoying my true erotic stories from my diary. Yes, I do have a lot more true stories to share with you, but in the meantime, I have a proposition for you. Yes, a proposition. I want you to take a journey with me. Take a journey into a mysterious taboo and intriguing world of sensual fiction. A world that offers a place for you to escape from your normal daily life. A world that expands your mind beyond boundaries. Beyond boundaries you never knew you had. A world where you discover intimate thoughts and feelings you thought you were incapable of. A place where you can indulge in nail-biting stories. Oh yeah, this is going to be so damn good. I'm writing this lustful, adventurous novel just for you. I've named this series as a tribute to the breathtaking trilogy that had us all glued to our books and movie screens. Well, fasten your seatbelts, or should I say, unfasten your seatbelts and get ready to live life on the edge. Welcome to Fifty Shades of Red. Chapter 10, Part 2. I place the contract into my living room table. This way, when I come home for lunch today, I can quickly grab it and give it to Alexander. I can't believe I've signed this outrageous contract. I could call Ethan's attorney and tell him that I've changed my mind. No, leave it alone. What's done is done. This whole arrangement with Ethan will be an eye-opener for sure. After a month, I will absolutely know if I want to continue with a relationship. If not, then it's done. Ethan will only be a memory. I walk out of my house, hop into my car, and head to work. Yay, Mondays. Who really likes Mondays anyway? I arrive to work, walk into my office, turn on my computer, and check my calendar for the week, making sure I'm tracking my projects and clients. Madeline is back from her vacation, and I see that she has me blocked off several times this week with Ethan. She's blocked me off for this afternoon, starting at 1 and I'm blocked off tomorrow morning? What? I'm not scheduled to come into the office until 12 o'clock noon tomorrow. What in the hell? I think to myself, puzzled at the schedule. Just as I'm sifting through my newly revised calendar, in walks Madeline. Good morning, Kiva. How was your weekend? Good morning, Madeline. My weekend was nice and relaxing. I said, not trying to give away my crazy rendezvous with Ethan. How was your vacation? I inquired, trying to quickly change the subject. Oh, it was wonderful. Much needed. I feel refreshed. Thanks for asking. I see that things are picking up for Elite Designs this quarter. Oh, really? How so? 
Well, Mr. Bowman has referred three high-profile clients to us, a collective gain of $7.6 million in contracts over the next year. And Mr. Bowman himself has added to his current contract for the Masquerade Ball event. It turns out that the event has now turned into three separate events, each one hosted at different locations. Reginald sealed an additional $2.8 million to that contract. Mark, Janet, and Natasha's teams are handling the events. However, Mr. Bowman has requested that you be assigned as the lead designer to oversee operations and serve as the liaison between he and the teams. My mouth becomes dry as I hear the very surprising news. I've marked you on the calendar for meetings with Mr. Bowman. It appears that he's very pleased with your work in which he should be. You're one of our best designers and your work speaks for itself. Managing to bring moisture into my mouth, I respond, Wow, um, thank you, Madeline. I really appreciate your kind and encouraging words. That's fantastic news. When did Reginald complete Mr. Bowman's contract? Reg received the request late Friday afternoon. He worked around the clock all Friday night, then all day Saturday. Poor thing. I spent my entire Sunday morning reviewing the details of the contract with Reg. Of course, I had to do a few tweaks, but we had the contract ready for signature by Sunday evening. I just thought I would tell you the good news in person. Thanks. I look forward to working on this major project, I replied. Good, Madeline said enthusiastically with a smile as she turned to walk away. Just before exiting the office, Madeline suddenly turns back around and says, Oh, and Kiva, at this rate, you will make promotion before you know it. I force a smile on my face and reply, that's even better news. Madeline leaves my office. I immediately turn my attention back to my calendar and realize that Ethan has me scheduled to meet with him for most of the month. That backstabbing maniac. Ethan knew about this new contract with Elite Designs all along. Huh. Even if I didn't sign the contract he gave me, he had a backup plan. He said that if I didn't sign the contract, that our relationship would end. The contract said that I would never see him again, and if I tried to contact him, that he would put a restraining order on me. The contract was written in a way to intimidate me. Ethan would have still been seeing me for work-related reasons. Ethan, you are always full of surprises. Well, I have a surprise for you. I'm going to rip the contract up that I signed into shreds and hand it over to Alexander. Since Ethan likes to play the game of chess, I will show him what I'm made of. It's a little after 12 noon and I let Madeline know that I'm on my way out for my one o'clock appointment. Madeline's face is buried in paperwork. She looks up at the clock. Oh, wow, it's 12 o'clock already? Oh, the last I checked, it was a little after nine this morning. Okay, see you tomorrow, Madeline said without even looking my way. She buried her face back down into her paperwork. I jump into my car to rush home. I really don't know what's going on. Ethan's attorney, Mr. Ludwig, said that Alexander would be at my place at 2 p.m. Why does Ethan have me scheduled to meet with him at 1? Who knows? I don't have confirmation from Ethan that he wants me to meet him at his place. Well, mansion. Besides, I don't even remember how to get there. I was too focused on the limousine ride when I went to his place. My thoughts are abruptly interrupted by my stomach growling from hunger. I hadn't had anything today but a cup of coffee early this morning. I make a sharp turn into the shopping center and pull up to the drive-thru. May I take your order? 
Yes, I would like one chicken soft taco with sour cream and a small Diet Coke. I pull around, pay for my food, and get back onto the road. Oh, how I love tacos. I turn on the radio and jam to the beat of one of my favorite songs, taking the last bite of my taco and squeezing in a sip of my soda. I glance at the clock as I pull into my neighborhood. It's 1252. I have time to relax a little before I hand over Ethan's ripped up contract to Alexander. I laugh at the thought of Alexander's face when he sees the shredded pieces of paper. I begin to approach my house when my heart drops to the floor. A piece of lettuce from my taco stops midway down my throat. What in the hell is Alexander doing here so early? I question as I see Ethan's white limousine parked in front of my house. I park my car in the driveway and quickly get out of the car. Alexander steps out of the limousine and opens the passenger area door. Oh God, what's Ethan doing here? My legs immediately grow weak. I clench my inner thigh muscles, trying to avoid literally peeing in my pants. Ethan's holding a bouquet of red roses. As I stand there with my thighs and legs clenched, staring at the two walk over to me, I'm absolutely speechless. Well, hello, Kiva, Ethan says as he approaches me. Ethan, what are you doing here? Alexander, I thought you were coming over at two. There's been a slight change of plans, Alexander explained. Yes, there's been a slight change of plans. Ethan says, repeating what Alexander just said. Shall we? Ethan said, gesturing for us to go into my place. Oh, sure. Yes, come in. I turn around, approach my front door, and start to unlock it. I try to stay calm, but so many thoughts are popping in and out of my head. What's Ethan doing here? God, he is so handsome. Why are they here early? Do I still want to rip up the contract? He brought me roses? Ethan and Alexander walk through the door. Please have a seat. Alexander sits down onto the couch. These will need water, Ethan said as he walks into the kitchen. I start to follow Ethan. Miss Jamerson, I have the contract. Thank you, Alexander says loudly. Oh, shit. I forgot that I left the leather portfolio on the coffee table. Shit, shit, shit. That's exactly what I'm in. Deep shit. Ethan takes the vase of roses over to the kitchen sink and adds a small amount of water to it, then places the vase onto my table. Ethan approaches me and says, When I finally receive word that you signed our agreement, I couldn't wait to lay eyes on you again. Our agreement? You mean more like your agreement? I think you are the main one benefiting from this? No, I beg to differ. Speaking of our contract, here's your prepaid check card with $2,500 loaded for this week for you to use as you please. Ethan hands me the card. I remove it from his hand. Oh, that's right. How could I forget about my keep quiet weekly payments? Ethan grabs me by the back of my hair, forcefully tilting my head back, fully exposing the front of my neck. He starts kissing, biting, and licking the base of the front of my neck. He slips his hand down the front of my pants and underneath my panties. I feel his cool finger slide inside of me. He moves it in and out as he continues to kiss, lick, and bite my neck, making my paradise wet while my mind is confused. There was no warning at all that this was going to happen. 
as Ethan continues to penetrate my paradise. I tighten my inner thigh muscles again, but this time to keep myself from releasing my cream around his finger. My jaw muscles clench as I try to quiet my moans, conscious of Alexander sitting in the living room. How embarrassed will I be if he heard the intimate moment I was having? Ethan pushes his finger deeper inside of me and massages my G-spot. Oh, this feels so good. I can't help it. I want to leak out all over his hand. Ethan releases my neck and then moves his lips towards my mouth. He starts kissing me. The sensation of his warm tongue and the perfect press of his finger against my G-spot makes my ankles tremble. My legs start to tremble. My thighs start to to tremble. My entire body is trembling. I'm shaking and squirming uncontrollably. I'm about to release my juices all over Ethan's hand when all of a sudden he abruptly pulls his finger out of me and with my head tilted backwards he slightly removes his lips from mine and inserts his finger into my mouth, then rejoins my lips. Both of our tongues are licking and swirling around his sweet finger, tasting my sweet paradise juice. So creamy, so warm, so sweet. Ether removes his finger, then his lips. He releases my hair allowing my head to move forward, my neck returning to its upright position. I stare into Ethan's eyes, amazed, perplexed, and feeling lustful. Next time you talk back to me, I won't be this nice, Ethan said with a stone, serious look on his face. The look he was giving me sent chills down my spine. How could he look so cold after we've experienced such a hot moment? We should be going. We don't want to be late for Dr. Finley. She has cleared her patient's schedule for us. I'm going to the doctor's now? Yes, now. Well, at least let me go and freshen up, I replied. I always like to go to the doctors feeling fresh and clean, especially for a physical exam. Ethan stares at me, then looks down at his watch. Okay, no more than 15 minutes. Okay, I replied. I quickly walk through the living room and towards my staircase. As I'm going up the steps, I notice that Ethan is walking behind me, following me. I walk into my bedroom and Ethan is right behind me walking in. Um, you don't have to wait for me here. I'm going to just wash up in the sink and change my underclothes. No, I'm fine just where I am. You're wasting time. Ethan replies while looking down at his watch. I don't respond and rush to my drawer to retrieve a fresh pair of panties and bra. I walk into the bathroom, close the door, and start relieving myself of all the diet soda I had. I flush the toilet when suddenly my bathroom door flings open. Ethan walks in, staring at me. With my pants and panties still down at my ankles, I stare back. Go on, don't stop. Ethan says, what the fuck? This is so creepy. Why is Ethan stalking me like this? I grab my washcloth, turn on the bathroom sink, and begin to wash up. Every so often, I would glance into the mirror and see Ethan watching my every move. What the hell? He keeps staring at me like he's obsessed or something. What have I gotten myself 
into. This ends chapter 10, part 2. Stay tuned for chapter 11, part 1 to find out what happens next. Ethan's demeanor has certainly changed. Kiva discovers Ethan's very dark, controlling side. You don't want to miss what's next. Here's a question for you. Would you feel creeped out or turned on if your significant other constantly stared at you? A thin line between admiration and obsession. Make sure you subscribe and tell a friend. There's going to be a lot to talk about. This is going to be so juicy. Yours truly, Miss Anonymous.